there's some more meat on this bone. We want to pick all of it today and in the coming days. And just teach just for a little while. Is that all right? Amen. When you hear the word of God, it's, it's just proper to respond to it and just say, yes, Lord, and Lord. And align ourselves to the word of God. Uh, for God, through his word, wants to reveal something to you to make your life the better. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to uh, not only hear the word of God, but be a doer also and practice it. Because my brother, my sister, it does work. It does work if you apply it. Now, he can't be responsible for you if you do not apply it. All right. But if you do apply it, I promise you, it works. And, and even when you don't understand it, apply it. It works. It works. Amen? Amen. John chapter 11, I'm going to read uh, beginning at verse 5. If you can, and you're able to stand to your feet. And then we're just going to talk a little about it pull over every now and again. John chapter 11, beginning at verse 5, read from the New King James Version, and the Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and her sister and Lazarus. So when he had heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I will go, and I may wake him, wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well, right? However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. He may not come when you want him. Yeah. But he's always on time. I want to just kind of subtitle this, it's not by accident. It's right. not by accident. If we had to uh, rank the miracles of Jesus Christ that he performed in the Bible, clearly, clearly, without a doubt, the miracle of resurrection would have to be the number one miracle that he performed. If it was a billboard, it was it'd be the number one hit, shot up with a bullet and holding fast. You know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Lazarus, anyone that he resurrects, that is a miracle within itself, a miracle. The Bible makes mention, the Bible makes mention that Jesus resurrected three individuals. We know that in our studies, that he resurrected three individuals. The first person that he resurrected was a young girl by the, uh, her name is not recorded, her father's name is Jairus. Uh, she was 12 years old and had died Jesus stopped by, took her by the hand, and brought her back to life and said, give her something to eat. He resurrected the little girl. The next resurrection that takes place in the Bible that Jesus does, he stops a funeral procession. In the middle of the funeral procession, there's a funeral procession going in, and a, 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 a mother is crying and weeping, and he stops and he touches the casket yeah, and, yeah. and raises a man from death. The third, the third resurrection is the one that we're talking about today, and that's the resurrection of Lazarus. Right. 
and we recognize that Lazarus has been dead some four days when Jesus comes, rolls the stone away, and calls him out and resurrects him. Those are the three resurrections. The beautiful thing that the text teaches us about those resurrections, the fact that the first resurrection took place with a little girl who had just died. All right. The second resurrection takes place when he stops a funeral procession of a man who has been dead for a little while. Because burials took place, they, they weren't like, like, like we are. We don't wait two or three weeks to bury folks. They were buried them. They died, they buried them immediately. Yeah, yeah. Then they, 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 they amen, amen, says the funeral planner. So, 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 so the, second, the second one is, the second one is uh, someone who had uh, been dead just for a little while. But then the, the third one is the one last with, and the Bible said that it was four days. Matter of fact, it refers to him as being stinky. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The Bible said that. The beautiful thing about that then, Greg, that we learned from that text, these three texts, is the fact that I don't care if your situation has just died, all right, all right. has been dead, mm -hmm. or is it stinking dead, all right. God can resurrect it. Amen. Amen. That, that, I, mean, I can just stop right there. That's good news because, you know, I don't care if your finances just died, all right. they've been dead, or they are stinking dead, all right. Jesus can resurrect it. No matter what the situation, he has the power to resurrect. Yes, yes. That's a beautiful thing. So the text says that 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 Jesus gets word that that a certain man named Lazarus has become gravely ill. He's not dead yet, but he had become gravely ill. Yes. And his sister Mary and Martha have a, has a messenger to go meet Jesus where he is. It says, "Tell him." That his friend, our brother, is sick. Not going to tell him what to do. Just let him know that he's sick. The Bible says that, that when the messenger gets there, he gets the word. And, 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 and Jesus has a personal relationship with all three of them. He has a personal relationship with Mary. He has a personal relationship with Martha. He has a personal relationship with Lazarus. As a matter of fact, they had such a deep relationship. Whenever Jesus was in town, he didn't check into a hotel. The Bible makes it clear that he lodged with them. Not only did he lodge with them, he, he ate with them. One time, he was there eating at the house with them. And the Bible says that, that Mary took some oil and anointed Jesus' feet. And then she took her hair. She didn't use the towel. She took her hair and dried his feet as a, a means of, of, of submission to him. It says, tell him that his brother, his friend, is sick. Mm -hmm. Is sick. Listen. So can you imagine? That he goes and tells uh, Jesus that he's that Lazarus is sick, and and the word comes back. Jesus says to him, and you'll find out in the previous verses that Jesus said, "Listen, he's sick, but what's happening to him will not be unto death. Yeah, will not be unto death." The Bible says that that he walks back. As the messenger gets back, he finds that, that Lazarus is already dead. Now, can you imagine leaving Jesus with a word in your spirit of what's going to happen, but when you get back, it doesn't look like what Jesus said? All right. All right. Hmm. All right. Somebody could just park right there and say, well, 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 Lord, it, it doesn't look like what, what the word of God has said to me. You said you'll never forsake me, but, but it looks like you know, I'm out here by myself. All right. He gets back. The Bible says, and, 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 and can you just imagine, you paint the picture, uh, the, the family's there, they're, they're weeping and wailing going on, you know, a bunch of people stop by the house just to check on the family because Lazarus is now dead, and, and he's coming back with a message that he's not going to die. All right. What happens when what I see before me right. contradicts the word of God or what I All believe right. to know true? Yes. Yeah. Because, because the Bible says that he's not going to leave me for or forsake me, but yet it looks like yeah, yeah, it yeah. seems like I'm going without, but it says that, that he shall supply every one of my needs. What happens yeah. when what I see contradicts what I know right. to be true? All right. The picture is painted here, and, 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 and the Bible then looks at the scripture and examines it closely. The reality is, Ricky, that, that Jesus never said that he would not die. He just said this would not be the conclusion. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the text, we, we examine the text and, and look at it closely. The situation contradicts the expectation. When I find myself confronted with disease, disappointment, delays, death, when my situation contradicts my expectation, 
I rem must remember what does God have to say about my situation. And am I going to believe what I see or what I know? Amen. The Bible says that, that, that we walk by faith and not by sight. 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 The worst thing, the worst thing that I think that can ever happen to us is to have too much physical carnal sight right. or insight. You know, when I know better, mm -hmm. can, can, I, can I just break it down? Yeah. When we have too much street knowledge, All right. because too much street knowledge will often contradict what the Word of God says. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hmm, that's just, uh, I didn't mean to pull over here, but, but you're like, it's stuck in the mud. Too much street knowledge when it contradicts the word of God. You know, listen, the word of God says that you ought to turn the other cheek. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But street knowledge says, first time, shame on me. All right. Second time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, listen, and, and, see, and, and then when we find ourselves in those situations, yeah. we feel like we need to take over the street knowledge and allow, you know, some, some, uh, Come on, talk to me. All right. Amen. Amen. And so, so, so what happens? So what happens? What happens? So how, how, do you, how do you handle that? The reality of it is that if I want my situation to look any different, I got to look at it from a different perspective. Amen. What does the word of God say about my situation? What does the word of God say about your situation? What does the word of God say about what you're going through right now? Amen. You know, you know, uh, what does the word of God say about how you ought to raise your children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or does the word, or do you take on the, 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 the neighborhood example of how you ought to raise your children? I, I remember, uh, and, and there were times when we were raising our children that we were often in conflict because there were parents who were allowing their children to do some things that we knew to be wrong according to the word of God. Uh -huh. and, and, and we would have to go against popular opinion. Well, well, listen, listen. Yes, there will be boys and girls here spending the night, but we will be here. <laughs> Come on, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, uh, listen, 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 listen. I would rather have them drinking at the house with me. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but that, that's the, the world we live in today. You know, listen, I'd rather have them have, have the house drinking with me, and I know what they're doing, I know where they are, and they're not, listen, we're going to take all the keys from them. <laughs> come, come talk to me, somebody. We're going to take the keys from them, and we're going to give them a 40 ounce. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. listen. So, 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 what happens? So how do, you, how, do you, how do you handle the situation? You go with the word of God. You have to know what the word of God says about your, your, your situation. We walk by faith and not by, by sight. When what I see contradicts what I know. All right. See, the problem is I'm going to go with one or the other. You know, so in order to go with what you know, you gotta have some knowledge. You gotta know what you believe yes. before you get to the situation. Yeah, yeah. Trying to tell you, uh, whenever we travel, one of the things I love the most, uh, if we wanna see a show, um, she's not as crazy about it as I am. You know, I always try to sneak in a magic show on her. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Uh, baby, you know, hey listen, uh, what you wanna do? You know, listen, we can go have some dinner, you know, walk around to some sightseeing, then we go to a magic show. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, at least, I love to want to see magic shows because, you know, if a good magician can kind of trick you into believing that, that, that he just walked through that wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I want to sit there and try to figure out how did he really do that. Yeah. Now, now the truth is, my issue, you know, I'm never worried about the fact I know he really didn't walk through the wall. It's how he did it. Yeah. But the reason why I know he didn't walk through the wall because I know yeah, yeah. within myself that that's physically impossible to walk through a wall. Right. Okay. However, however, Tiffany, if you don't know what you know that you know that you know, all right, all right. anything can trick you. Yeah. Right. That's why it's really easy for a magician 
a daddy magician yeah. to perform tricks on a child. All right. I got your nose. <laughs> Give it back. See, when you're immature in Christ, All right. anything can fool you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And then you go with anything that you see. That's right. You know, but you can't, but listen, when you're mature in Christ, you start to understand that contradicts the word of God. My God shall supply every one of my needs. I know what it looks like right now. But, but you gotta but you gotta know what you believe. Now listen, I got one point in this text that I'm gonna share with y'all this morning. It's not by accident. It's not by accident. Listen, Jesus, before he goes to resurrect Lazarus, he waits two days. He waits two, listen, he waits two, two days. First of all, Rick, he, he could have easily have just spoken the word and Lazarus would have been healed. Yeah, yeah. yeah he could immediately have gone and saw, checked on Lazarus. But he waits two days. He waits two days. Why does he wait two days? The text, the text says that, that we learned that first reason why he waits two days is because he wants to make sure that God gets the glory. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God may have you waiting right now because he wants to make sure that he gets the glory yes. and not you. Yes. You know, you know, because there's some things I can figure out on my own and then I can look all smart. All right. You know. You know I can figure out how to get the bill paid. I can rob Paul, pay Peter. Yeah, yeah. Rob Peter, pay NRG. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can figure out something. But, but when your back gets against the wall, yes, sir. and you run out of options, yes. uh -huh. you know, listen, then you come to the conclusion, Lord, if you don't do it, All right. it won't be done. Amen. So, 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 so he may not come when you want him, but he's always Right on time. Right on time. Right on time. So, so we understand that, that blessings delayed do not always mean blessings denied. We talked about the fact that my faith is tested when I'm forced to wait. Do I really, do I really trust him? Do I really trust him? And then the ultimate goal is that God is giving glory in your situation. In your situation. If God is not getting glory out of your situation, your pain is being wasted. If God is not being glorified in your situation, what you're going through, the pain that you're experiencing is being wasted. It's being, not, 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 brothers, I think you need to park right there. Just let your mind just, just, yeah, just yeah. meditate on that just for a minute. If all this I'm going through, those tears I've cried at night, crying out to God that, that Father, I stretch my hands, if, right. if he's not being glorified at the end of it, that pain is being wasted. All right. oh, okay. My prayer, our prayer should be, Lord, don't let this pain go wasted. Mm. Because if it goes waste, that means I have to learn the lesson all over again. All right, teach. Is he, is he, is he being glorified? Uh, Job said, he, well, he slayed me. Yeah, yeah. Yet will I trust him. Will I trust him? Will I trust him? This is, it's not by accident. Now, let me, let me share with you. Get your paper out and take some notes. I'm going to do something real fast and dig real quick and then go on. God is strategic in everything that he does. It's not by accident. All right. Your situation is not by accident. Your circumstance is not by accident. Listen, we recognize that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord or call according to his purpose. It's not by accident. God is strategic. Listen, when he got you here, he didn't get you here trying to figure out what he's going to do with you when you got here. He had a purpose for you, so, so you are to live with purpose and live on purpose. Amen. You are not live just haphazardly. God has something uh, in store for you, and he's working something out. He's strategic in what he's doing. Because the text says that when he found out that Lazarus was sick, yeah, yeah. the Bible says he waited two days. Yeah. 
He could have gone immediately, but he said, no, I got, to, I got some things I got to work out of this deal. He says, if I go right now, folk may not believe. And if I, if I go right now, the disciples who are with me are going to question, you know, what are we doing? The Bible says that Jesus even went as far as when the, question, the disciples began to question him, they said, Lord, if we go right now, you know they're going to stone you. Yeah, yeah. Because we just left there and they tried to kill you. Now, can I walk with that just a little while? Yeah. Were they really concerned about Jesus or were they really concerned about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the Bible says, they're going to stone you, Lord. You know what happened last time we were there, right? We were on the run. So, 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 but Jesus said, listen, don't worry about that. We're on God's timetable. And God will not allow it to happen before it's time. Amen. And then when he allows it to happen, you know, it's because he wanted to happen at that time. So you got to understand I understand, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus, God, is strategic in all that he does. It's not by accident. You know, you really need to wrap your mind around this thought right here because, listen, whatever happens to you, uh -huh. it's not by accident, and God can use it Amen. for his glory. Now, check this out. Amen. Good, good. So, so, if I'm not living on purpose, I'm not living with purpose, I'm not living at all. I'm really just existing. Nothing happens by accident. Nothing just happens. It's not by accident, but it's by purpose. It's for purpose. Go to Isaiah chapter 55. You're going to take some notes. So take, some, take your time and find it in your Bible. Isaiah chapter 55. Go to your table of contents and find it. Don't act like you got it and you don't have it. Go to Isaiah chapter 55. Take, I'm going to wait for you. If you got your, your, your phone, look it up on your phone. How you want to look it up, write it down. Isaiah chapter 55. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to paint this picture for you real good. Isaiah chapter 55, beginning verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your, way, my, your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, my thoughts, than your thoughts. Listen, listen. God has a plan in store for us, for me. And it's not by accident how things roll out and how they're happening. All right. The problem is that we think that he ought to think like we think. Mm. Mm. And he says, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, my thoughts are far away from your thoughts. You think you know what you're doing. He says, but you got to trust me in this situation. My ways yeah. are not... Let me tell you how far. They're not this far away. They're not this far. They're as far as the heavens of the earth. They are so far off. Now think about that. When I'm in my most mature state, my thought process compared to what God is doing in my life is so far off. So if that's the question, I must just trust him. Now listen, listen, now, 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 here. Listen. Think about this. Think about this. Still think about this realistically. Yeah, yeah. How many things God has to be working behind the scenes to get you where you are? My, my. Now, 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 think about that. Yeah. You know, listen, if, if it's your soulmate, you, know, you would have to be in that particular Starbucks on that particular day right. at that particular time and they would have to work, walk in and get thirsty for some coffee at that particular time in order for y'all to come to All right. yeah, yeah. I mean can you just imagine what had to take place to make that think about this dude I mean every traffic light would have to hit at a certain time yeah. you know listen they had to get up on time at that particular day so they can meet you there and you had to be running late that day so yeah, All right. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Think about everything that goes on behind the scenes. And, 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 can I just deal with it? and, and the reality of it is, it's even deeper than that. Amen. Because he may want you to get together so you can testify to that uncle that's about to go through something that your uncle went through. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is working behind the scenes so hard. Listen, listen so, Amen. so, so, so y'all can. So it can come together. And listen, here's the deal. The beautiful thing is, Rick, I can never try to outthink God. Amen. I just gotta trust him. Trust. 
I can never try to out, because the problem is I constantly try to outthink God, but the reality is I just got to trust him. Because, listen, because really, my ways are not his ways, so I really can't outthink him. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> listen, I think it was around uh, 2000 when Charlene and I moved to Houston. Listen, I had no desire to move back to Houston. Charlene said, let's try it. So we prayed about it, decided to move back to Houston. Listen, it was for a company promotion. I took a job here when I got here. So I, I figured God was trying to elevate my finances, so he brought me to Houston. But the reality of it is, it had little to do with my job. All right. Listen, when I got here, I went to seminary. You know, I finished seminary, then God had me plant a church. So the reality of it is, it had nothing to do with the job, but he used the job to get me here. All right. So, so even what you're dealing with right now may not have anything to do with See, what happens is, though, so, what has to happen is, he calls for me to every once in a while look back at how he brought me through. And when I look back at how he brought me through, then it gives me the ability to trust him going. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. You see how he worked it out and how he continued. So, so, listen, so when the situation looks like it's not working out, I just got to trust that he's working it out for my. Yeah. Yes, so it so nothing happens. Nothing happens by accident. Go to the Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Real quick. Psalms 37. Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Listen, listen. He, listen. It's not saying. It's not saying that I understand every step, every step. It says that they're ordered by the Lord, and regardless of where he orders me, I'm going to delight in it. Yes. And though he fall, he shall, he shall not utterly be cast down. You've got to get this, because this helps. Because what I'm going through and recognizing that it's not by accident, there is the possibility that I could stumble and I could fall. Yeah. But utter, uh, utterly, I will not be cast down because he's going to work it out on my behalf. Yeah. You don't believe me? Look at this. Yeah. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. So it says that you're going through, but you may stumble and you may fall from time to time. Yeah. But the reality of it is, God's going to hold you up. Yeah. Yeah. That's if your steps are ordered by God. All right. yeah. it's, the problem is, is when I get out of step. So sometimes they may say, you, know, you may feel like I'm taking two steps forward. Maybe you're taking two steps back, maybe you're taking two steps to the side, but, but after a while, if you really look at the picture from a bird's eye view, you'll recognize I'm doing the electric slide. <laughs> so, 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 so the steps are ordered, and I just got to trust God is doing what he's going to do on my behalf. Amen. Not only that, you know, when I get in step, then go to verse um, 25 of Psalm 37. Then you can uh, claim that promise. I have been young. And now I'm old, yet I'm not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. That, that, that's what the Bible says. Now listen, now, 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 now check this out. It's going to hurt a little bit. When things happen that don't seem to fit, God is up to something. Yeah. All right. Hmm. My brothers, this is what I've learned in life that when I'm dealing with situations and circumstances, when things begin to happen in my life and they don't seem like they fit together, I can rest assured that God is up. The Bible says that, that, that they told him that Lazarus was sick. And it would just make good sense that he would go check on him right then and there. But the Bible says he waited two days. So that doesn't seem to fit. And then listen, and then he turned around and said, but it's not unto death. And Lazarus dies. Mm. It doesn't seem to fit. So, so I begin to look at my situation. When things don't seem to be fitting, mm. oh God, what are you up to Amen. now? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. When, 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 when it's not coming together like it really ought to, and it, it looks a little strange, God, what are you up to mm -hmm. in my life right now? You know, you know, it, 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 you know I got to trust you, but what are you up to in, in my situation? Now here, now here, now. But you got to understand this, and this is where, I, as a preacher pastor, I would, I would, I would not be uh, leading you fairly if I didn't tell you this. There are two things that happen. Let me clear them up for you, too. We are faced with two things, either circumstances 
are consequences. Mm. Circumstances are consequences. Circumstances are events beyond our control, resulting from forces or influences we did not cause and cannot change. There are some things that happen in life that you didn't cause yeah, yeah. and you cannot change. All right. You sit at the light, you get rear-ended. Circumstance. You know, you know, listen, a, a, a sickness or disease comes over your body. Circumstance. Things that you have no control over. Listen. However, there's also something called consequences. All right, yeah, yeah. Consequences are life events and experiences that result wholly or in part from what we ourselves have done. Jesus. Mr. Graham. Is what I'm being faced with a circumstance or is it a consequence? Because you handle them differently. See, the, the, the thing we want to say, Demetrius Easy, we want to try to blame everything on circumstances. Come on. We want to say, well, that's just my cro uh, cross to bear. Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, no, really, that's your crop. Mm -hmm. You planted that seed and it came up on you. So, so when I come on Sunday morning, a lot of times, Bill, I'm not praying and uh, praising God for what he's done. I'm praying for a crop failure. Yeah. Come on. But the reality of it is, there are consequences and circumstances. And, 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 and they will have to be, now, 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 now circumstances, you deal with them di differently. You just faithfully approach them and trust God to work it out. Right. And then you say, God, what are you trying to get me in this situation? What are you trying to teach me? A lesson you're trying to teach me through this circumstance. It's a trial, it's a circumstance. You cannot control it. You have to do it. But, 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 but the reality of it is, we handle, we handle consequences differently. All right. All right. And Don, if you never deal with the consequence, mm -hmm. listen, you cannot become better. Amen. Yeah, no, 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 no. Now, how do you deal with consequence? The only way for me to deal with a consequence in my life is to repent. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's to repent and, and, and acknowledge, God, I was wrong. Amen. I'm wrong. And whatever. Listen, if it's a thought process that you have, yeah. repent. Teach. Teach us. That's right. if, if, if it's something that you've been doing that's wrong, repent. Yes. And when I say I repent, what that basically means is, Lord, I recognize that, that what I was doing is wrong. You know, you know, you know, I have sinned. I was going the wrong way. And I turn and decide Amen. to go the right way. Amen. Yeah. It, 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 it's more than just saying I'm sorry. Yeah. It's about a change of direction yes. yeah. when we repent. So, 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 so am I dealing with a, a circumstance or am I dealing with a consequence? Because, listen, because the consequences deal with the principle of reaping and sowing. Yes. That which you have sown, you shall reap. Yes. I mean, that, 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 that's not good news. You know, that, that, that's painful. That's painful because we want to believe that, that God will turn a blinded eye to what we have done. Hmm. But the reality of it is, Sean, that if you have sown it, All right. there will be a day of reaping. Yeah. 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 Amen, teacher. Now, 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 now listen. Now, now, here's, here's something, Craig, you got to remember, though. Listen, I cannot do anything about my past. I just understand there's going to be consequences to my action, and I have to repent. Yeah. Yeah. However, 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 I can also do some sowing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I need to sow some good seeds. All right. All right. In order to, you know, to reap some, some blessings down the road. See, see, see we get so far, uh, uh, caught up in, in the fact that I have some seeds in the ground. I'm ashamed of some things. Mama did that, that yeah. I'm not proud of, and, yeah, and, I'm, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm suffering the consequences of my actions. However, however, God is also calling for you, for me, to get some good seeds in the ground. Yeah. Yes. What are you sowing? What are you sowing? Mm -hmm. We understand what you're reaping already. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tell me. You understand what you're reaping. You're reaping some good seeds that you've planted, but you're also reaping some, uh, some bad seeds that you've planted. Yeah. The thing is, I don't want to continue to plant bad seeds. Amen. Because you know what? Though I'm not reaping them today, there will come a day. Yes, sir. It will be harvest yes, time. Sir. Yes, sir. It will be harvest time. 
So, so you need to make sure that, that you, you get some good seeds in the ground. When God says, don't, what he's really saying is, don't hurt yourself. Amen. When God says to me, don't do that, what he's telling me is, don't hurt yourself. Because you're going to pay for it down the road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't, 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 don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't do that. Because um, you're going to pay for whatever you have sown. You're going to reap it. Hmm. Nothing happens by accident. God is trying to get something out of you. He's trying to get you somewhere. You're dealing with, I'm dealing with seeds I have sown. I want to reap a harvest of blessings. Amen. Therefore, I put blessing seeds in the ground. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I trust it. Because I understand that there are some consequences to my actions and there's some circumstances I deal with. But you know what? God is in total control. Amen. And every time I found out he has my back. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's my bad. Listen, listen. I think the year was 1995. A long time ago for some of y'all. Listen, uh, it was the end of a work day. I'd, I'd gone home, and I was on my way home, and, and the traffic was going to be rough that day because I was in the 5 o'clock traffic. I was in the rat race. Uh, I was in San Antonio, and I was getting ready to go home. And, and what I decided to do was I said I'd stop by the convenience store and pick me up something for the ride. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Listen, so, so I go into the local, back in San Antonio, it was called Stop and Go. I don't know if y'all have those here in Houston, but stop, you, you stop, look at the prices and go. No, 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 no. They're going to put it to you right there. If you want it convenient, it's going to cost you. So, 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 so I, went, I went to the Stop and Go, and I went in there, and when I got in there, Don, it was crowded. It was crap because everybody's doing the same thing at five o'clock. You're trying to, you know, little guys and they're trying to get they, they cold one for in a brown paper bag and take it home, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't get a brown paper bag at this time. So, yeah, it's gonna, gonna be clear with this, okay? So so uh, so uh, so I went to the uh, convenience store and, and I was walking around, you know, I was going down the aisles and I, and I got me some chips, you know, and then uh, and then I went over and got me a soda and uh, I got the soda and then I said, well, I want some, you know, I want some people have to have some like that with some sweets. So I got me some candy also. So you, you got to balance it out, you know, 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 so, uh, you know <laughs> the salty with the sweet. So, you know, so, so I got the chips, I got the soda and I got me some candy and I, and I got in line and the line was long that day. You know, so, you know, we all stand there, feel like you're at World or, 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 or Disney World. You know, <laughs> you know, and they're long. So, so I'm sitting in line, and, and, I, and I'm waiting to get to the register to, to, to pay for my food, uh, my my items. So I get to the register, and the line's long, you know. And I put everything on the on up there. He rings it up. He says a lot, and I say, and I said, okay. So I reach in my pocket to pay him, and then I realize I had no money. This is not a good view right now, okay? Because I got all these folks behind me. I just stood in line this whole time. Uh, waiting to, uh, to pay for this, right? And I realized I have no money. Okay, you know, so, you know, so, you know, of course, you know, I, I do the, the natural thing. I do the pat down, you know, like, you know, 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 now I already know I ain't got no money. Anymore. You know, I was like, oh, God. Listen, and I'll never forget, out of the back of the line was a guy who went to our church named Hugh Hawkins. And he says, I got it. I'll pay for it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Listen, there became a calm over me like, oh, thank you, Jesus. This is what I <laughs> My brothers and sisters, when you trust God to be God in your life, I don't care what you're going through. You'll hear a still voice that says, don't worry about it. I got you. Amen. Jesus paid it all, yes, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Yes, My hope is built yeah. on nothing less than Jesus' blood 
and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Nothing happens by accident. He's got your back. Why are you going to trust him? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed.